Ben Carson has gotten in a lot of trouble recently for implying in interviews that victims of gun violence are to some extent perhaps uh, responsible for dying because they were too inactive, too passive. They should have been packing and then they might not have died. And you might think, well, he's on the spot, everybody you know, just speaking. You might make a gaffe, say something you don't mean. Nope. It turns out, no, even when it's a prepared statement, he says some pretty offensive and inaccurate stuff about gun violence. This is an excerpt from his book that was just released, A More Perfect Union. He said German citizens were disarmed by their government in the late 1930s. And by the mid-1940s, Hitler's regime had mercilessly slaughtered six million Jews and numerous others whom they considered inferior. Through a combination of removing guns and disseminating deceitful propaganda, the Nazis were able to carry out their evil intentions with, uh, with relatively little resistance. Now, the idea that the Nazi regime could have been taken out if only there had been a little bit more private ownership of firearms seems to me historically inaccurate. I'm sure that he's done his research. That's what he's basing it off Through of. Through a combination of removing guns and disseminating deceitful propaganda. That's all it took. That's all it took. It's two things. Right, 12 million people, 6 million Jews. That was it. That's all we needed was a little propaganda, take away the guns. That was all they did. That is, uh, that's, you know, I think that with Ben Carson, there's the, you know, I've, I, we, Cenk and I we were talking about this yesterday, that the discrepancy between someone who appears to know a lot about something in a certain area and absolutely nothing in everything else. Like, Ben Carson, it's, that's the biggest gap in the history of the world. Yes. Because he apparently, like if somebody collapses here and has a stroke, he would probably be the guy to go to. But for anything else, from running the country to mowing your lawn, I think he's the worst guy to go to. If you ask him how many points you get for a touchdown, it's inconceivable he knows. T totally, obviously four. It's amazing that Ben Carson can avoid all the bombast of Donald Trump, yet still be just as big an asshole. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so he was given a chance to uh, perhaps denounce himself or to update this, revise this. Uh, let's see if he takes that opportunity. Through a combination of removing guns and disseminating deceitful propaganda, the Nazis were able to carry out their evil intentions with relatively little resistance. So what is, the, what is the point you're trying to make? If, if there had been guns in Germany, my, there might not have been a Holocaust? My, my point is, they were, that was only one of the countries that I mentioned. There were a number of countries where tyranny reigned, and before it happened, they disarmed the people. That was the point. So, but just clarify, if, if there had been no gun control uh, laws in Europe at that time, would six million Jews have been slaughtered? I think the likelihood of, of Hitler being able to accomplish his goals would have been greatly diminished if the people had been armed. Greatly yes. diminished. Yes. Hey, listen, here comes the Luftwaffe. Get your Luger. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. The, uh, so, and, and Wolf even gave him a break. Yeah. Wolf threw in Europe. Like, he just talked about Germany, but Wolf was like, you know, they rolled into about uh, 12 other countries. Do you want to? <laughs> yeah. uh, but no, yeah. Ben didn't want to do it. Also, regarding his previous statement, which I found almost more offensive because it was so particular. Offensive is the wrong word because I don't care about offensive. Found more just sort of galling the notion that the people in Oregon weren't brave because that's yeah. essentially what he was saying. And then he was specifically asked about it, is that what you meant? And he said, no, I just mean, I was talking about me, what I would do. Uh, which just strikes me as this gigantic cop out. Like, no, I'm yeah. not saying they weren't brave. I'm just saying I would be brave. Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I would yeah. be brave. Braver. But then Braver. we know from his own story about being held up that he did not do that. He, in fact, pointed to someone else and said, no, stick that person up instead. That's exactly. But he, I don't know that story. Is that right? Yeah. Yes, that's so true. Let, let uh, me, at a Popeyes. Yeah. Let me just quickly uh, give you an update on that story. So he said he was held up at a Popeyes, as he called it. He said Popeyes? He said Popeyes. Oh, come on, on and, that alone. On he, that alone. And he called Jesus. it a, a, an organization. <laughs> I, was, I got held up at an organization called Popeyes. Oh, my God. Um, I think he, so he, he drove, should be disqualified. Okay. I think he, uh, he drove his Jaguar there. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then today, uh, Anna called bullshit on it on yesterday's show. Bullshit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and said, no, he didn't get held up and do any of that. Uh, today, Baltimore uh, PD said there was no record uh, that can verify uh, any such robbery at a Popeye's organization. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That Ben Carson was involved. Yeah. In. Yeah. 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 I, so, so Ben Carson, so Ben Carson is not only wrong about his own being held up, but also the history here. So first of all, uh, Hitler did not disarm German citizens. It started far b before yes. that. So in 1919, the Treaty of Versailles disarmed Germany. That was part of getting rid of their ability it's to generate... 
is partly why Hitler came back. Exactly. Because the enormously punitive nature, this is this is not in any in any dispute, the enormously punitive nature of the Versailles Treaty, where we decided to pin what was a uh, the most and amazingly the most senseless war modern society has ever had. We decided to pin all the blame on the losers, Germany. When while yeah. they bore some of the responsibility, you cannot let the other, the rest of the noble class in Europe off the hook. And they came down so hard on Germany that it wrecked the economy in particular. And then Hitler reached out to be able to say, look at what these others have done to us. Look at what they've done to Germany. And his particular brand of leadership took hold 15 years yeah. later. Yeah, exactly. And so uh, in 1928, the legislation was relaxed. Uh, Germans could possess 19, firearms. 1938, right? No, 1928, it was further relaxed oh, in 38. Right. In 28, they could possess firearms, but they were required to have permits. In 1938, it was relaxed further. Rifles and shotguns were completely deregulated. Permits were expe extended to three years, and the age at which guns could be purchased was lowered to 18. Now, it is true historically that in 1938, he did outlaw Jews specifically in Germany from having those guns, but there was private ownership of guns. Guns were available. And the idea that it was the disarming, that in 38, they can't buy any new guns, well, they just, they couldn't fight back. So of course you're gonna have the situation, which I find did not just be historically inaccurate, but it's extremely historically insensitive because they did fight back. There were over 100 Jewish armed uprisings. There was, in 1943, there was the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising, where a huge group of Jews fought back, armed, and killed 20 Nazis, but because of the strength of the Nazi war machine, 13,000 Jews died in that single battle. So the idea that they just, they didn't fight back, they couldn't protect them, they tried as much as they could, it's not, it's not a militia they were fighting against. It's one of the strongest militaries in world history. So you're saying that uh, the, one of the leading Republican candidates for president is wrong on the facts? Exactly. <laughs> you know, let me just say that Ben Carson is so dumb, I don't think he even realizes he's black and all his friends are racists. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, uh, now, <laughs> so let's, let's, let's break down this uh, a little bit more, because I actually think you're almost too kind yeah, uh, to I, them. I, yeah, I yeah, yeah, so for, first off, uh, Hitler did the exact opposite of what the right wing has been saying all this time. In 1938, he loosened gun regulations. In fact, he got rid of gun regulations for shotguns and rifles and said, hey, everybody gets guns. So the whole idea of, oh, the Germans would have beaten back the Nazis if they had just had guns, if the population, yeah. the tyranny of the government could have been defeated if the Germans had just had guns. The exact opposite is true. He gave them all guns. He said, yes, have at it, Haas. I'm going to get rid of the regulation that was put on you. Now there's no regulation. You guys get to have guns. That, if anything, enabled the Nazi rise to power. They are 100% wrong, right? Now, he took it away from Jews because he, of course, hated the Jews and wanted to scapegoat them and do all the things. By the way, here, we say, Second Amendment, guns for everybody, except Muslim gun-free zones, right? right? Sure. And that... If that doesn't send a chill down your spine, it should, okay? So there are some in this country who say, yeah, 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 I mean, everybody should have guns except one religious ethnic minority. Yeah. Now, <laughs> we just told you that's exactly what happened in the 1930s yeah. in Germany, yeah. right? So I, now, luckily, it's not the government yet. The right wing has not won. We have a Democratic president, but we have Republican presidents threatening to do likewise, right? And then, and to John's point, it, nonetheless, because guns had been deregulated overall, there were plenty of Jews who did have guns in Germany and actually throughout Europe. Most of them, unfortunately, were killed in other parts that were conquered, Warsaw, Soviet Union, yeah. and the rest of Europe. Now, in those places, again, uh, you had a very similar situation as we just explained here. And yes, some Jews fought back and they were brutally murdered. The whole idea that if they had a couple of Lugers, as Jimmy pointed out, they could defeat the German war machine. You know, France had a whole army, and they went down well, in yeah. what four days. Le, the, yeah. the, the U.S. didn't easily beat the Nazis with our know, entire military. Let's, you know, first of all, the Warsaw Ghetto, where the Jews were armed. There, how many Jews were killed in the war? Thirteen. Thirteen thousand. How many German soldiers were killed? Twenty. Yeah, Fifty, I think. But same point, right? Um, My so. Uh, it was 50. We got 50 of them. <laughs> um, so you mentioned that it wasn't easy for us, and of course we we had help. Uh, the British 
uh, fought the Nazis for six years, from 1939 to 1945. The Free French fought them for six years, and the Free French did fight in Africa. Uh, the Canadians fought them for six years. We fought them for four years. The Italians turned around and fought them for two years, and the Soviet Union fought them for four years. And you think, I mean, this is why, like, I almost regret so having to list this. It's so dumb. It took the greatest armies in the world four to six years to stop the German war machine, and only his aggressiveness and willingness and eagerness to fight the war on two fronts is, it, it's possible that's the only reason we won at all. Yeah. So and, it, and has anybody seen pictures of Stalingrad, right? I mean, what they did to that city was unspeakable. And the, all the mighty weaponry that they unleashed on Stalingrad. We got a couple of hicks in this country who thinks who they, they could have taken him out with a couple of Glocks. A yeah. couple of hicks? Right. He's second. Yeah. He's second in the, for the Republican nomination. Yeah. And, and finally, from my perspective, I mean, to tie it all together, there goes Ben Carson again, victim blaming, right? Well, I would have been braver. If I had a gun, I'd have taken out the Nazis, right? If, we had had, if they had a guns, they could have taken out the Nazis. Ah, oh, you see that? They couldn't do it, right? And that's why they got slaughtered. Yeah. You know, a lot of people wouldn't have the courage to blame the victim. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's amazing to me that we have a political party that's supposed to represent half the country, and their platform is to increase people's access to guns, but decrease their access to harmful stuff like health care and voting. And education. Uh, yeah, the, the last thing that I want to say about this is that I wish that this was just specific to Ben Carson. This is not. He's not the first person to make this claim that if there had, not, if there had been uh, no gun control, uh, it could have been stopped. This is something that Alex Jones peddles and other right-wing authors and bloggers and speakers have been saying for a number of years. Uh, now, I'm going to jump ahead to graphic 10, by the way, Jesus. Uh, the Anti-Defamation League uh, responded to this, as they have several times when other people have brought this up, saying... Uh, that previous, previously they said that drawing comparisons between the gun control debate in the U.S. and the Holocaust was historically inaccurate and offensive, especially to Holocaust survivors and their families. I await the apology from Ben Carson. I don't expect that it's forthcoming. Yeah, you don't have to apologize anymore.